Hey everybody, I'm Alexa, Marketing and Algorand, here today with Charvel from Wairu. Um, thanks for being here. Congratulations on the launch of the pre-sale. Hi everybody, thank you so much Alexa for the invitation and for the opportunity to talk about what we're doing. And yeah, thank you about the, the launch. It's been great, it's been a great week. Yeah, lots of uh, a lot of work, but it's been great. The community has been great. Cool. So I want to start first. Um, obviously, we're going to talk about what the pre-sale includes, the longer-term vision you're building here. But tell me a little bit first about your path that got you here. Like, what's your background? How did you come to be wanting to work on this problem? And I'd love to hear how you discovered Algorand too. Awesome. Uh, well. First of all, my name is Charve Chedrawi. I'm CEO and founder at Weira, for those who don't know me. And I've been in the telecom sector for over a decade now. Uh, I actually studied business and then I studied architecture. And it was when I was studying architecture that I had, uh, I, I lived myself the lack of connectivity. And when this happened to me and in the privileged position that I was, I said, well, if I have this problem, what's happening with the rest of the world? So I started reading about it and I came up with, I, I came to find this um, report from the United Nations saying that uh, the lack of connectivity was over 50% of the population. And we were talking about over 10 years ago. And that was, I was, that was, um, that was something so huge that I just couldn't, stop thinking about it. So I started building around uh, this problem to try to fix this. So I this is my fourth startup around telecommunications. The first one was a hotspot company. Then I did, um, we did a, mar a Wi-Fi marketing platform, um, which was one of the first ones in the world, maybe before Wi-Fi marketing was even a thing. That was back in 2012. Uh, then I worked as a regional Wi-Fi marketing director for a multinational company. I led teams in six countries. We connected over, we had over 50 million connections during uh, a couple of years uh, working in that company. And then I realized that what I was doing and the solutions that I had weren't actually fixing the, the base problem, which is lack of connectivity. So then my previous startup before Weiru, it was kind of a decentralized or collaborative internet network, but it wasn't on chain. It was very hard to scale. It worked great until COVID hit. And then what I did, I went directly to well, big telcos and I said, hey, I, we have this platform. This can help lots of people get connected during COVID because of course we all saw the news of people around the world struggling to work or study because of the lack of internet access. But all I could get from large providers was like, we are not focused, and I've been quoting this, we are not focused on connecting more people. Uh, our main goal is to upsell our existing clients uh, because it's more profitable. So when I realized that the lack of connectivity, it's, it's mainly, the, its main reason is because the providers don't focus on connecting more people. I realized that what we needed to do to fix this problem, because as you can see, I'm passionate about fixing this problem, was rethink how internet providers work and how internet providers are put together. And that's, uh, that was uh, early last year. Uh, I closed my previous company and I started working and drafting uh, everything about Weiru. Uh, I, didn't have, I hadn't chosen any chain yet. When I started, I just started with a landing page and an idea. I started telling people about this. People started backing my project. I got into one accelerator called Parallel 18 first in Puerto Rico. They believed in the project. Uh, they helped me get uh, the project on its feet. I, I could hire people. Then I, I was a solo founder when I started. And then uh, first Paula, she's my, uh, my she's CCO and co-founder. Uh, she joined when I was in Parallel 18. And then when we started looking for the chain that we were going to use, uh, we found our other co-founder, Edward, um, and we started researching uh, other chains. Until we got it, uh, until we got hold of Algorand, and after reading the white paper, reading about Silvio, and looking at how others were failing where Algorand was succeeding, it was a no-brainer. We just thought, well, this is the most secure, most it's the fastest one. It's super low fee transactions, which is something we also need for for people to access connectivity 
uh, because when you want to access the internet, you don't have time to wait for a transaction mm -hmm. to be completed. It has to be instant finality. So of course we went uh, we went with Algorand, and then when we decided on that, we started researching the foundation, the grants they had, and we stumbled upon the Algorand Miami Accelerator. Actually, somebody sent me a link about this. They said, "Hey, I, I, somebody sent me this, and maybe you're interested because I, I, that person knew that I was looking for a chain." And I said, this is perfect because we already decided on Algorand. So we applied, we got this, uh, this, great, um, this great couple of months with the people at the Roker and Algorand Miami Accelerator. It was great. We met so many great people. Uh, we got connected with Borderless Capital, uh, which is our lead investor. And of course, they advised us in tokenomics, in go-to-market study, because they have lots of experience, not just in the Algorand ecosystem, but in the centralized infrastructures ecosystems yeah. as well. So yeah, I, I think that's, that's about it. After the accelerator, we got, um, when we started the accelerator, they asked me, what are you going to have for demo day? And I said, I'm going to have this. And they said, no way, you're not going to have that. Like, that's too much. Uh, that's just a long shot. And I said, okay, let's try to get that. That's my goal. My, that's my personal goal, my team. And we delivered. So when we delivered, they, they were so happy. They, they when they uh, it's borderless, and when they invested, they told me, you are a founder that, the, that has it very clear in how uh, how deliverables uh, deliverables should be, and you completed what you offered, and that's something super valuable in this this type of ecosystem. So when we did that, we closed our round. Thanks to that round, we hired more people. We went from being a team of four people, five people, we are fifteen uh, people team now, and we are still going to be hiring more people towards the end of the year. Uh, and yeah, that's how that, that's how it's been until now. That sounds like the accelerator. Yeah, it sounds like the accelerator did its job in sort of accelerating things. Love that. Um, so one hundred percent. Yeah, hands down. If whenever that accelerator opens again, I I will encourage more people, as I did in the second batch, to apply to this accelerator because I am positive that the accel we being part of this accelerator uh, helped us help us get in the right path to start building in the way we, sh we are building now and how we should reach to the community. How We, we had a 200 people community and now we're over 3000 in, in our community. Uh, so that's amazing as well. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. So tell me more about how blockchain is central to making this whole concept work. Yes, of course. So when we talk about Decentralizing internet infrastructures is something very, very hard to do. It yeah, is very hard. Phrase, sorry to interrupt. You use the phrase build your own internet infrastructure. So maybe that's where we should start. Like, what does that mean? And how does right. blockchain come into play? <laughs> right. So what we are doing, we are we are an internet service company. We want to bring connectivity to people, but we want to do it in a decentralized way. And the reason we use blockchain is because this gives us uh, transparency, full transparency on what happens on the network. So people that are sharing their connectivity don't have to rely on a centralized platform that tells them what happened with their device. It's gonna, everything is gonna be unchained, all the data is gonna be unchained. So with blockchain, we can represent a device on chain with something that we call non-fungible nodes. It's uh, a type of, of algorithm NFT that we are going to use to build this representation of a device on chain and everything that happens to the device will be burned on this, uh, on this uh, variable type of, of NFT so that it's every, everything's gonna be transparent, everything's gonna be public, something that we couldn't have done without, uh, without, uh, without a blockchain um, solution behind it. And of course, it gives power back to the people because uh now people actually own a piece of the network and they own when they own tokens they own a piece of the protocol behind running that network and that is probably like our motto it's like we a, a problem hard to solve or a, or a problem solved is a problem that we can solve only together so the more people involved in this uh the better we believe that the internet infrastructure um ownership should be in the hands of um, as many people as possible and we couldn't have done this in a traditional way blockchain plays a very very important role on how we can actually decentralize this infrastructure and we could have we could have built our own blockchain to do this like other platforms do 
but why do that when we already have one of the best blockchains out there with all the necessary things that uh, a platform that like the one we are building needs to to be running and that's why we chose Alaron, of course yeah i love it so right now i know you're in this pre-sale mode what does that mean how can people engage and participate in pre-sale and you know i just went in i bought my uh hotspot pool token so what's going to happen now that i own that <laughs> right so 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 first we need to understand the two services or the two products that we have right now we have the genesis device and we have the hotspot pool tokens the genesis device is a physical device that you receive and you connect directly to your internet connection that you already have in your business or at your home. And with our node operators application or our hotspot operator application, you will connect to this device and you will configure that with your account. And once it's, once it's configured, it will broadcast a Wi-Fi network that anybody around will be able to access. And whoever accesses that network is gonna consume data and that data will generate rewards for the hotspot operator. And the other side, we have the hotspot pools. And the hotspot pools are are hotspots that we deploy as Wero. So we go into low-income communities, partnering with uh, entities like WOKU, which is the World Council of Credit Unions, or the United Nations, which we are in the me we are in the middle of a negotiation to to work together to bring connectivity to vulnerable areas. What we do, we bring connectivity to this place. We deploy a swarm of hotspots, and then when we deploy this swarm of hotspots, let's say a thousand hotspots, we tokenize that. Right, and that that will be a pool. We token as that pool, and people such as yourself can get a pool token that will re that is a representation of the ownership of that pool. So you will generate rewards based on that pool's performance. The difference here is that when you hold you when you host your own device, you are running with all the costs. Right, uh, you have to pay for bandwidth, you have to pay for electricity, you have to pay for the footprint of the people coming in because if you're a restaurant, you're the one bringing people right. in, so you get rewarded with the, the whole rewards goes uh, goes to the operators. And the way it works is that 20% of the rewards goes to where the rest goes to the operator. In the in the hotspot pool tokens, it's a little different because since uh, we are deploying the hotspots somewhere else, we are going to cover those costs. So the way it works is that all the revenue that comes in, we cover the cost of having those networks running and then we share the rewards. The protocol keeps the same 20% and the rest goes to to the token pool owner. So it's basically the same thing, how it works on the on the reward wise, only that instead of you uh, running with all the costs to maintain that, we do it, we pay for that, and then we share the rewards. And the protocol keeps the same amount in either way. It's indifferent to us. That's just to, to keep things going. Awesome. And so pre-sale is gonna last for how long? And then you're gonna roll onto testnet, is that right? Yes. So uh, before we go into that, your uh, your your previous question for people that buy pool tokens now, right? They do, they, they buy the pool tokens, and when we're main it, they'll be on um, testnet. They they will be able to mint them there, so that everything that happens during testnet time and all the rewards from that will be airdropped to those holders when on mainnet. And then on mainnet, of course, that's going to be real rewards. Right. And yes, the 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 presale is is going to last thirty days. Uh, it's 27 days now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's already three days now. And um, that's when the device is going to be $200 for the pre-sale. Then the Genesis devices will go up. The uh, pool tokens won't. And this is the best time to get a Genesis device. It's the volume one. These are limited edition uh, first time uh, devices from Wearu. So this is very, so this could be very appealing to people to get devices because of that reason as well. And it's going to last 30 days. Hotspot pools are fifty dollars a piece, and, and and Genesis devices are two hundred dollars a piece. And then when you get a Genesis device, when on mainnet, you have to buy tokens and uh, log those tokens to your uh, your hotspot, so that will so your hotspot starts generating you rewards. But it. those tokens, but those tokens are yours, and whenever you want to retrieve them, you can uh, you can do that. And then your hotspot won't generate rewards for you until you log them down again. For the hotspot pools, we're going to be doing that. So part of whatever you paid for one or 10 hotspot pools is going to go back to get wearers out of the market and lock them up into these hotspots because it's the same way. They work exactly the same way, only that we manage some and the rest are managed by, by third party. Awesome. And sorry if I missed this, but where are you planning to deploy some of the first hotspot pools? Or is yes. 
That's a great question. So we are deploying the first hotspot pools in Latin America. As we speak, we are deploying five blog nodes uh, in five different uh, areas in, within Ecuador, three around Guayaquil City and two around Quito. Those are the two biggest cities. And we plan to, uh, each one of these nodes are going to be capable of hosting uh, up to 2,000 hotspots, mm. which opens a lot of possibilities for hotspot pool tokens to, to start. Uh, we just have 10,000 hotspot pools right now. But once we have all those networks deployed, we're going to have 100,000 hotspot mm -hmm. pools available with, for all those hotspots deployed. So uh, Ecuador is the first, uh, the first country, and then we'll, we, we will be expanding to other countries uh, during the following year in Latin America. Yeah. Genesis devices can be bought from anywhere in the world. Uh, right. When you buy them right now, you choose your country, then on the shipping side, you put your address and you'll get them to your door. Anywhere in the world, you can deploy a Genesis device, but the hotspot pools, we are starting in Ecuador and we plan to expand a thousand X in the next five years after, uh, after a public sale next year. Amazing. Uh, so Thank you. That's, that's like touching on a little bit of the long-term vision, which was gonna be my next, um, my next question. Is there anything else sort of in the longer looking ahead roadmap that you wanna highlight? Yes. Right now, we are selling our, our proprietary devices, the Genesis devices. But we want, of course, we want this to grow as fast and as wide as possible. So what we are working on is on a compatibility so that you can get any off-the-shelf Wi-Fi router, flash the firmware to Wearer's firmware, and it, it will be running Wearer OS, which is our operating system for the devices. And once you do that, you'll be able to uh, to become a hotspot operator without having to buy a, a direct Wi-Fi router from us. So we're working on that, which is going to be great because anywhere, anybody from anywhere, they don't have to wait. They'll just go to the store, get a compatible device with our firmware, just follow the steps to, fear, uh, to flash that firmware, and they, they are ready to go. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we, 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 we have our roadmap to have our public sale uh, Q1. 2023 hopefully when the market uh takes off again mm -hmm. um that's another thing and yeah those are the two biggest things that are coming next year and the idea of expansion uh it's going to be within latin america with the uh with the hotspot pools at the beginning but that's not the that's that's not the end right we want to expand this globally but most likely we'll be deploying more hotspot pools next year in various countries simultaneously in latin america Love it. That's amazing. And uh, just because I like to always get my little plug for Decipher in, we are talking with the foundation team who's planning that event about setting up some of these devices at the event, which would be pretty cool, right? So that means people could access their Wi-Fi through the device during the conference, right? Right. right. Yeah, we're talking about doing that at Decipher and, uh, and two other events that the foundation is hosting. Uh, and what we're going to be doing there, um, I'm going to I'm going to have a, a space to talk to people there to have like a small keynote, maybe five minutes to tell them about what Wero is about. Mm -hmm. And of course, there will there will be uh, an open Wi-Fi network there, so people will be able to just go there, create an account, use an password, and they will be able to connect throughout the whole event using their 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 Wero account, and they'll be rewarded with with some Wearu tokens by doing so. So we will encourage people to use the Wi-Fi and get rewarded by using the Wi-Fi on the event. And it's a Wi-Fi that is going to be running on top of Algorand. So that's going to be amazing. Love it. So cool. And my last question, and this is just because I like to give, you know, a little spotlight to, to the rest of the ecosystem. If there's anything, you know, any projects throughout the ecosystem, the Algorand ecosystem that you feel excited by also, or, you know, that you see potential future collaborations with, is there anything, you know, that you're keeping an eye on and saying uh, excited by what other people are building? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about everything that's going on on DeFi in, mm. on Algorand. Um, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, take sides into any projects, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I do want to, I do want to say that there are some projects out there. There are some NFTs projects that we have been talking to because uh, they can give utility to their NFTs. If that utility becomes providing connectivity to people somewhere else or providing computers to people that need connectivity and also need computers as well. So we are actually looking uh, for projects on the other ecosystem that can, uh, partner with us so that they can take care, for example, of education 
because we are going to be onboarding so many people to the internet in these low income communities that they have no idea about what blockchain is, but they will be thankful for this connectivity. And that will be a great opportunity to educate them about how this connectivity got there and yeah. what's happening behind the scenes and this amazing ecosystem, which is Algorand, that makes it possible uh, to bring connectivity to them. So we'll be onboarding people that will need to be educated to be onboarded directly into the Algorand ecosystem. Because remember, most of these people are not bankerized either. Mm -hmm. So there are other projects that are trying to bankerize people in 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 emerging countries uh yeah. some are specifically focused on latin america so we're looking to partner with some of those projects in in the near future we just want to have the network up and running first so that then we can see exactly okay this is the pain point the, the pain point that we have here the pain point that we have here that it's not up to us to fix that so we can bring other projects on board and we can collaborate on and strengthening the ecosystem for algorand and for Wayro, of course as well yeah i love it cool well, there's a lot of exciting stuff to, to come, it sounds like, down the road. But before we quickly sign off, why don't you tell people how they can learn more? So uh, I encourage everybody listening to uh, follow us on Twitter, join our, our communities in Telegram and Discord. We have Spanish and English communities in both. In Discord, we have channels for various uh, languages, so you can find uh, people speaking your native language, so you can talk about the project. Uh, go to our website, weiru.io. Uh, in the website, you'll find all the information about us. You will find links to the white paper. You'll find links to the token paper. And of course, you'll find links to the shop where you'll be able to choose whatever pro you want and then go to the checkout and, and receive your, your confirmation via email. We are working on receiving crypto payments. We will have that up uh, sometime next week. So people will be able to pay with credit card. And we'll be able to pay with uh, with algos, and we'll be able to pay with USDC on algo as well. So the community have asked for that, so we're working on solving that. So next week it's going to be a, a, a little more interactive. Uh, instead of just going to a checkout, you will create a Wear account, and you will have a uh, a history of your purchases there, so you'll know what what's happening. Everything it's going to be there, and you'll be able to pay, connect your wallet, your algo and wallet with uh, my. Uh, with my algo or with or using para wallet as well so we're we're trying to bring both solutions so people using para can use it or people using my algo can of course join as well so this is happening uh you can follow me as well on twitter i'm always speaking about this and i'm always speaking about how 50 percent of latin america in the caribbean population don't have connectivity how only nine percent of the population in latin america has high quality fiber how mm -hmm. Yeah, eighty-seven percent of people live within range of a four G connection, but only there's only a thirty-seven percent penetration there. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a big big gap, and I'm always talking about this because people need to understand that we are a project with a mission. Right. We want to solve a problem. We're passionate about this because we understand the value of internet access. I couldn't be today. I couldn't be here today myself talking to you about this and explaining how this is happening if it wasn't because i had the privilege of having internet without when i was younger so yeah. we have the mission of providing every kid every young adult every every adult the access to information which will inevitably change their lives i love it i i don't think there's much more to say beyond that i'm excited to see um how things progress and we'll touch base again soon hope maybe once uh once testnet's done once you're ready to talk on mainnet we'll come back and do another video of course uh happy to happy to talk uh thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to the community about this i'm thrilled about what's uh, what's going on in the algorithm ecosystem and what's happening with where and, and the, the great things to come thank you again sure. everybody watching yeah. have a great yeah. one bye